All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another episode of Bank Bank's Puzzle Theory. Let's get right into it. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about next, the next cue that the sh both both of the players have. So in this game, Puyo Puyo Two, which is kind of like the classic uh, standard of the verse genre, you can see in the middle of the screen for player one. The next piece is blue and yellow, and it's also blue and yellow again, and then after that it's two red, so it's got a two deep next cue. Now both players throughout the game are going to get the exact same set of pieces. Before the round starts, the game determines, uh, I think it's 256 bytes, and those 256 bytes are all the colors for the next 256 Poyos, and then once those are exhausted it just rolls over and does the same 256 colors again. So, this is one way of doing it, and the most common way of doing the next cue. We're going to be focusing on the next cue in this video. Okay, and now we're looking at the first example for today's video. This is a game where the shared, where the next cue is shared between amongst the two players. So you see, the next piece is uh, three red, one blue, and whoever makes their move first gets that next piece as their piece. So it's a shared cue. So if player two finishes, they get it. <coughs> so in my mind, this really adds a lot of strategy because if the player needs a specific color and they see that's the next color, well, they're going to race to get it. They're going to try to drop their piece down first. So whereas, you know, let's say it was like Puyo Puyo 2 where both players have the same next pieces uh, programmed for them before the round starts and they know exactly what they're going to get next there's no variation based on when they drop their piece I think it removes some of the strategy or some of the decision making from the game I'm not saying it's better or worse but it's definitely different all right now we're looking at the second example and it's soul dam again because the last game was soul dam for switch it was a remake and this is soul dam for the arcade, the original version. So same situation here. It's a shared next queue. I think it's exactly the same. But, uh, you know, it's another interesting example, strategy, and it's a nice way to highlight the two different versions of Soul Dam. So you can see in the next uh, queue out, out in the middle, whoever finishes the, dropping their piece first, they get it. So let's move on. All right, and up next is SD Gundam Power Formation Puzzle. Let's go! Does this game... Oh, it's gonna be a, like a lot of menus and stuff. Hurry up. Okay. Uh, oh, I hit fast forward. Sorry. So again, you can see sort of the next cue. Uh, let me drop down. Player 2 should get yellow. Yeah, player 2 should get another yellow. Another yellow. So I, I'm gonna have to admit, I don't know a ton about this game. I don't fully understand it. The times I've played it before, I thought you could like change the pieces to look totally different or something. Maybe I'm thinking of a different game. But anyway, it's definitely got a shared next queue. It is an example. A shout out to Roddy for mentioning this one. All right, here's a game I love, Pikinia. This has a shared queue and it's too deep. So with Soul Dam and SD Gundam Power Formation, it just showed you one next piece. However, interestingly, in Pikinia, it shows you two next pieces. So there's even more information for the players to kind of make make decisions about how they want to move. You know, like, let's say the piece that you really need is the second deep piece. So maybe you're going to delay your move until the opponent makes their move, and then you want to get that second piece. So I think generally in game design, or this, this genre's game design, more information could mean generally deeper, better experiences. Oh, there's some garbage. All right, here we go. Tetris Battle Gaiden. Gaiden. Uh, so this is, I believe, another example of a shared next queue. Oh, it's three deep. So that's even better. And and this game has, look, you can see that flashing piece within the square block. So there's more information and there's more variation. So players might really want to fight to get that specific piece. So that could create a lot of interesting situations, a lot of uh, uh, interesting decision making, 
So I think that is a really nice design, and this is a wonderful example of a shared next queue. So we went from uh, like a shallow, just one shared next queue with Soul Dam and SE Gundam Power Formation to two with Pekinia, and now with three at Tetris Battle Gaiden. All right, now we've got everybody's favorite Tetris game. It's Tetris 2 for Super Nintendo. And what do we have at the top? It's a shared next queue. This time it's only one deep. So maybe not as impactful as some of the other ones we've seen. Uh, but it is definitely a shared next queue, so it deserves a spot. Uh, analysis. And I'm playing against the computer now. So it, it's interesting to see uh, how the computer might react. See if they want that piece or not. You know, figure it out. Let's go. It's everybody's favorite puzzle game again, this time on the NES. So let's see if there's any differences. Nope, it's still a one deep shared next queue. So it looks like basically exactly the same as the uh, Super NES version. Uh, still, you know, interesting example. And one thing I have to point out, when you when you do like in Puyo Puyo 2 where they have each player has their own separate well or where own separate next queue it's really important to make sure that they each player gets the same set of pieces otherwise it's unfair whereas if you design a game with a shared next queue you don't need to to worry about that aspect i mean for tetris for example you still need to have that like bag selection where you give a variation of pieces that's important but you don't have to worry necessarily about like the fairness aspect, which is very important in a verse gameplay of this nature. Let's go, it's Magical Tetris Challenge in German. Here we go. Let's see, does this game have a shared queue? The suspense is killing me. It looks like it might. Fertigue! <laughs> Fertigue, baby! Los! Uh, okay, so it's just got the one single shared next to you, which is okay. You know, kind of run on the mill, but we can live with that. Um, I'd like to get some more German. Uh, I guess pause is the same in German. So, you know, it's the same as what we saw. Uh, I believe this is the last Tetris game to be featured in this expose. So, you know, get some more variety going here in a second. Um, on to the next one, as they say. All right, folks, this is Puzzle Puzzle Arena Toshin Den. That's a mouthful. So I think the next cue that this game uses is very interesting. It's almost a hybrid where each player has their own next piece individually, unlike, I think, every other game that we saw so far. However, the source for that next piece is shared. It's not, uh, you know, a unique predefined series. So I think it's almost like an interesting best of both worlds where there's the, the common cue and the fighting over the next piece, but at the same time, there's also sort of a delay and a, a better planning ability maybe, if that makes sense. I think this game is really interesting. All right, folks, we are coming to the last entry in this video. And this happens to be a preview of my new game that I'm working on, codenamed 12ish. And the reason why it has that name is because, uh, unlike, I think, maybe any uh, puzzle game or any 8 or 16-bit game ever, this game uses 12 by 12 tiles, which was incredibly complicated for me to set up. So you can see some debug information there. Um, so I don't want to I don't want to get too much into it right now, but I just want to show off the shared next queue, which uses I think basically the same system as uh, Puzzle Arena Toshinden, where it's got each individual player with their own next piece, and then the source of that is a common well. And right now I haven't done any optimization or you know logic behind the shared well. I'll show you with from player two to show you that it, that's working. Um, I haven't done any kind of idea. I haven't I haven't really done anything with you know how that next queue is going to work. But it doesn't necessarily have to just be you know uh, 
three pieces of, of the random color selection. It, it could take on a very interesting character of its own. Who knows? Uh, that's something that I'm going to, you know, uh, maybe look into as I, as I set this game up more. And just FYI, you're looking at, like, pre-alpha footage. I only have matching codes set up for horizontal. So this is basically, it's like columns, very versus oriented. It's going to have spells. It's going to have characters. It's going to be buck wild. Very versus oriented game. And uh, I think that does it all for this video. I really hope that you found it informative. And uh, please like, share, subscribe, and let's go crazy.